Hello everyone and welcome to the iSpring Solutions webinar. My name is Paulina, I am a community manager and I will be the moderator today. Thank you very much for joining us as we're going to speak about tips and tricks on content creation from an iSpringer. And as a very special iSpringer today we have with us Robert Cahey. Hi Robert, how are you doing? Hello everybody. <laughs> Robert is a Vice President of Marketing for Cplay Networks and it's a Silicon Valley startup developing software-defined networking solutions for enterprise and service providers. Thank you very much Robert for attending this webinar today and uh, willing to speak for all our other icebringers. Great to be here, thank you. Also we have with us today Elena Galvez. Hi Elena, thanks for joining us. Hi, Paulina. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, absolutely. Elena is our customer care manager and she works with iSpring clients helping them to define how iSpring can be a perfect fit for their needs. And today, Elena will be revealing a special bonus for all the webinar attendees. We also have today with us Luba Shigulova. Hi, Luba. How are you doing? Hi, guys. I'm doing fine and I'm glad to join you today. If you have any technical questions about iSpring programs and services, please do not hesitate to ask. I'll be glad to help. Thank you very much for saying that. <laughs> Luba is our uh, systems engineer and she works in technical support and she will be more than happy to answer your questions, guys, during the Q&A session. So, just like Luba said, uh, don't hesitate to send them in the question box on the right side of the GoToWebinar panel. And at this time, at this point, I think that we are ready to start, so I'm passing over the mic to Robert. All right. Thank you, Felina. And Let I will know. make you a presenter. Okay. So, uh, let's see. It says show my screen. All right. Hopefully, can you see my screen now? Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, good morning, uh, everybody. Uh, as Polina mentioned, my name is Robert Cahey, and I am Vice President of Marketing at Seaplane Networks. And before we get started, I uh, thought I'd give you a little bit of background about who we are and what, what we do. Uh, we're actually a Silicon Valley-based company, uh, for those of you familiar with the area. So. We are uh, fortunate to be in the uh, high-tech area uh, of innovation. And basically what we do is we create software-defined networking products. And if you essentially think of the traditional wires and boxes and stuff that make up networks, we actually virtualize all of that and make it uh, very easy to use and, and deploy uh, in different size companies. We're about 20 people, so we're relatively new, and uh, uh, the good news is we are growing rapidly, so it's a lot of fun. And we uh, were formed in 2013, so we're only about three years old. So one of the key things for us is really trying to figure out how we reach and make an impact with our market. And we've done a lot of the traditional things uh, in terms of outreach. And, and one of the key aspects and things that we do is trade shows. And for those of you who have uh, been to trade shows or participate in trade shows, you know the general routine, which is, you know, you have a booth and you want people to come into your booth and talk to you and learn about your products. And we wanted to change that model a little bit because if you if you look at the quote on my screen, you know, that step into my parlor said the spider to the fly. It's you're trying to get them to come into your world, and that can be difficult because a lot of times they're just looking and really don't want to engage. So we wanted to change that model uh, somewhat and see if we could reach out and engage the customer. And the way we wanted to do that was to actually engage them through a personalization experience and move into their space. So we wanted to take our message and make it available so we could engage them in a one-on-one -on -one, uh, 
uh, process. And to do that, we started looking at different tools. And that eventually led us to iSpring and iSpring Converter Pro. And as you know, iSpring Converter Pro is part of the larger iSpring suite of products. And it's a very essential tool when you look at starting to, to push your content out to uh, different types of, of platforms, whether it be a web-based or a handheld or a mobile device or so on. So that was what led us to uh, you know, uh, the engagement and relationship with iSpring. And that, that actually is what we use to create what you see here on the screen. And we'll go into this a little bit deeper in a minute. But it was to get the customer to engage in a conversation with us. And then based on that conversation or that dialogue, actually then present different types of information. And we wanted to make it a very casual experience because as you, you know, may know in the typical trade show environment, it's very crowded and a lot of people. We wanted to be able to take that level of engagement and try to personalize it as much as possible. So what we did was use PowerPoint to create an interactive presentation that really consisted of five elements. And again, I'll, I'll walk you through these in just a minute to show you how they actually look and feel, and you can actually try them yourselves. But one was to present a high-level picture of, of you know, what our market was about. So that was in the first panel. The second panel was then about you know, a specific targeted audience for service providers and what might be men meaningful to that particular market segment. And then the third one was more of the enterprise type customer, which was really a subset of the capabilities and what might be of interest to them. And then we also provided or presented a use case. And this was very important because as you start to engage your customers and talk about your product, the ability to demonstrate how you've actually implemented that product in a customer environment is, is very, very important. And then the fifth piece was just a static technical diagram because, as, as you well know, once you engage that customer, they want to know the details. So having that capability also was very important. So that was the general layout of, of the engagement process that we defined for the customer. Pretty simple, actually. We didn't really want to engage the customer in a 20-slide presentation because, as you know, you lose them on about slide two sometimes. And you know, not only in presenting or engaging in a market activity, but as you're doing this in a training activity, that's very simple. You are similar is that you need to really be able to keep them engaged. And we had some constraints when we we entered into this process. We were very time constrained. Uh, we actually came up with this idea about uh, six weeks or maybe even a little bit less than that before the first trade show that we wanted to uh, create this for. So we had to have something that would allow us to really develop this quickly and iterate through a continuous development and a continuous integration process. And so we were looking for a tool to do that. And since I knew PowerPoint pretty well already, I was looking for something that, that would allow us to do this. I looked at other tools to actually create applications on, say, for an example, on an iPad. But the, cur the learning curve and the time associated and the cost associated of doing that was just prohibitive. Had a limited development budget. I couldn't go out and spend a whole lot of money or engage an outside consulting firm. So I wanted to use PowerPoint, a tool I knew, and then I was looking at how I can then make this, you know, this interactive presentation available on different platforms. So it had to be portable, had to be reusable across those platforms, and it essentially had to be bulletproof because I had several people that would be using this tool during the engagement process and the training curve had to be very short and it had to be really, you know, as we say in the, uh, in the U.S., idiot proof, so to speak. So 
I had to find a solution that would allow me to create this thing very quickly, uh, very easily, and make it very robust and reliable. So the question is, and you may have this question as a you know, participant in this, in this uh, webinar, is why, why didn't you just use PowerPoint itself? I mean, PowerPoint show is really nice. You can do stuff. You can create. Uh, you know, hyperlinks in there and, 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 and so on. Well, first of all, you know, ultimately it has limited portability in that uh, I can create it on a Windows environment. If I take it to a Mac environment, it has some limitations about what you can do with triggers and so on. So it was, uh, you know, it was, it was the tool I wanted to use to create the capability, but it wasn't the tool that I could use to present the end product, so uh, couldn't couldn't use it from that perspective. I also wanted to have a web-based version of this, and as you'll see in the, the webinar today, I'll provide you the link where you can actually go look at the end product on our website, and you can actually try it yourself. And I couldn't do that with just PowerPoint. And then there were other things like, well, you know, I needed to be able to have maybe a Linux device that I wanted to run this on. And, you know, last time I checked, PowerPoint on Linux was not an option. Um, and so I needed another mechanism to figure out how I could deliver this solution without having to engage in an outside development and develop it for a specific platform such as an iPad or maybe uh, you know, a Linux base or a Android base tablet. So that led me to iSpring Converter Pro. And as I mentioned, you know, it's obviously part of the bigger iSpring uh, family of products, but I think it's, you know, really the underlying uh, core piece of the product because ultimately what it does is it allows you the ability to publish out to those various different platforms and form factors, and so on. So I looked at, I won't say I looked at a lot of products, but as I kept looking for this type of solution, the ice cream product kept coming to the top every time when I would start thinking about the different options. And first, you know, it, it allowed me, as I mentioned, to leverage my existing skills. And that was very important because, once again, a lot of, not a lot of time and not a lot of budget. Uh, seamless integration, uh, you know, it, it integrates right in with, with PowerPoint, as I'm, I'm sure you know from the rest of the iSpring tools, the e-learning tools, and it makes it very, very easy to use the product. has a very fast learning curve, uh, and, and I'll also give a lot of credit to the iSpring team, because given the fact that I had such a short development cycle, uh, I asked a lot of questions, and they were very responsive. So, uh, you know, they were they were very helpful during this this process, and it it satisfied my need for the short development cycles, and I could do this in a continuous development, continuous integration model with immediate feedback. So it wasn't like uh, you know I'm actually running a product now to do a new UI <clears throat> for our product itself, and as I mentioned. To Felina and the team, I have a seven o'clock call every morning with the development team in India to look at what they've done in the last 24 hours. Well, with iSpring uh, being a CDCI type model, I can see the immediate results, and that's very important. Very cost effective. If you look at trying to do this as an application on a, a, a portable platform, a mobile platform. I think you'll find very quickly that uh, you know, there's just there's just worlds of difference between the cost associated with trying to develop it as an interactive application and using a tool like iSpring Converter Pro, and it gave me that portability. It was very important because I wanted to be able to run it on different types of tablets or have it on the web and so on. And it supports HTML5 and CSS3. And for me, that's pretty important because I'm pretty familiar with both of those uh, tools, or if you want to call them tools, or, or standards. And so it, 
it allows me to think about how I can be even more flexible with the product. So uh, again, as I look through these tools, uh, I, you know, iSpring, uh, especially iSpring Converter Pro, just kept coming to the top of this is really the tool that, that would make the most sense to use for this type of, of short development cycle. So what's next? Uh, I've got a, a series of things I would like to take you through in terms of looking at how you actually create some of the things that I did in the presentation. But I think at this point, um, I believe Elena would like to share with you uh, the special offering that iSpring has. Definitely. Let me just uh, share my screen. One second. All right. Can you see it? Yep. Yes, I can see it. Okay, great. So for all our webinar attendees, we are happy to offer this special discount. So if you are interested in purchasing our products, desktop products, or our services like iSpring Learn or iSpring Cloud, our web-based solutions, we can offer you a 25% discount till September 26th. So you can um, get it with this uh, price, with a special price, or you can also take advantage of the 15% discount. So this offer is valid till the end of this month, till September the 30th. And if you are an academic or a nonprofit or a government institution, we will also combine those discounts. So you are, if you are eligible for one of those discounts, we'll add the special discount on top of that. So if you are interested in this special offer, feel free to send your contact information in the chat box in the questions area and we'll definitely contact you after the webinar. Uh, All right. Elena, is this for iSpring Suite 8? Yes, so, well, it's not only for iSpring Suite 8, but for any of our desktop products, uh, iSpring Converter Pro and iSpring Suite and uh, iSpring QuizMaker, so for any of those tools, and for our online solutions, too. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, and I just wanted to mention for everybody who just joined our webinar that Robert is our client, and he uses iSpring Converter Pro license to create his content, and iSpring Converter is a part of all iSpring tools, and uh, Robert will be um, uh, happy to share with you tips and tricks on content creation, and also, also share uh, his case of using iSpring. So I think we can uh, pass the mic over to Robert, back to Robert again. Mm -hmm. Just one moment. All right. Okay. Uh, thank you, Elena. And uh, can you guys see my screen again? Yes, I can. Okay, very good. So uh, what I'd like to do now is, is start looking at some of the various aspects. And, you know, first thing we'll actually do is, is take a quick look at the end product of what, what I actually created <clears throat> and show you, you know, what the engagement process would look like fairly quickly. Then I'd like to talk about some of the things that you need to think about and when you start targeting certain <clears throat> excuse me, form factors such as aspect ratios and how to deal with those. Talk a little bit about a bill tip in PowerPoint around the selection pane because as you, <coughs> excuse me, as you build these up, I think you'll find fairly quickly that managing the number of shapes becomes a, uh, a challenge. We'll talk about pop-ups pop and triggers and how they work and then I'll talk about how you can do what I call a poor man's navigation bar. Uh, for actually being able to move through an interactive presentation. 
and then a little bit about iSpring configuration and publishing and how you can do some things on controlling the action and the branching. And then we'll dive down into some uh, uh, advanced, what I call CSS, JS techniques. This is probably where Luba will cringe a little because she probably won't want me to do some of the things I'm doing, but given the fact that uh, I, I do know HTML and CSS, then there was a couple of things I, I tweaked uh, just uh, for, for uh, my own personal benefit, how, how I wanted it to look. And then I'll share some lesson learned. And, uh, you know, Polina, if, if there's questions during the presentation on a certain topic, don't hesitate to, uh, you know, raise your hand and let me know and I'll try to answer them at that point. Sure. So uh, let's take a, a very quick look and uh, if, if you're interested yourself uh, you can actually go to this URL uh, cplanenetworks.com forward slash tablet and take a look at the, pres uh, the interactive presentation itself and you can actually test drive it there. So what you will see there will uh, will look a little bit different in the sense of the aspect ratio because dealing with the web is a little bit different animal, but it'll give you the same uh, same experience hopefully. So what I'm going to do is jump over to here and so this is this is what the present or the the interactive presentation look like and this may look complex and complicated to you uh, but in our market, it's a pretty common picture of how things get put together in terms of, uh, you, you may be familiar with the term cloud computing, and this is uh, uh, one of the models that we use to represent it. So when we first approached the, the visitor uh, to the booth, we would start with this picture and then engage them in a dialogue about, you know, what market are you in? Are you a service provider or an enterprise? person. And from that, then we would actually select one of the two options to talk about. And if you'll notice, then the screen has some interactive spots on it, as you'll see the cursor change. And some things are interactive and some things are not. And so as we would talk about various aspects of what they do and what our product does, is we wanted to bring up a, uh, an interactive dialog box that we could then talk about certain aspects of, of our product in, in, in the context of what they do. And then what we wanted to be able to do was dismiss that, that particular dialog, <coughs> excuse me, and go on to another, uh, another aspect of the product and so on. And so as you can see, it's, it's a fairly simple model, but, you know, again, and this is where the combination of PowerPoint and the iSpring Converter Pro tool makes it really nice is I can kind of make it bulletproof in that all I have to do is click and it brings up a dialog box and I can click and the dialog box will go away. And so this was really the same model for uh, the service or the enterprises as there were certain interactive boxes on the screen that you could click and you could bring up a technical diagram and talk to it and go through and engage in the conversation. So you could completely tailor the discussion based on what the customer's interest or what their questions seem to be. And then we had another piece which was a case study and this was a simple build up. So if you notice, if you look at these other uh, aspects of the engagement process, then the, the previous and next buttons down here are, are uh, disabled, but when we go to the case study, they are enabled. And then what this allows us to do is actually follow a set dialogue with the customer. So we would start off talking about, you know, what our use case with the customer was being a global service provider. And then you could actually go through and then build up a storyline that you wanted to talk to the customer about of various aspects of how we delivered this particular solution. So you could go all the way to the end, and then as you needed, you could actually back down through the conversation. So this was very important, again, 
and ensuring that it was you know more or less idiot proof or bulletproof. So nothing against you know uh, salespeople, but <laughs> sorry, Lane, <laughs> not not uh, not not dissing salespeople, but you know I had to have it where our salespeople could use this uh, with confidence so that they didn't get lost during the presentation and so and then the last piece was just a very you know simple static diagram that our technical people could talk to and say and this is how we actually implemented various aspects of our capability and you'll also notice that there's a zoom button over here that allows you to zoom in and out to full screen mode and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute so let me get back over here. So again, if you want to go try this yourself, you can go to this URL and uh, give it a try. And again, it's going to look a little bit different from an aspect ratio. You may see some gray bars on the side because when it depends strictly on the size of your, your monitor you're using at that point. So let's talk about that aspect of, of, of uh, the, the aspect of aspect ratios and, and why it's important. And what I call it, it's, it's managing the white space. <clears throat> and what I didn't want was, you know, the, the, the presentation, the interactive presentation to come up and not fill the screen on the handheld device that we were using. So it was very important to try to figure out how uh, to do that. And iSpring Converter Pro gives you lots of options for creating the borders and the frame and, and, and the presentation model. But depending on those different aspect ratios, you may see slightly different results. So, you know, the, the first guidance I can give you, though, is you'll never be able to completely control the aspect ratio, especially on the web. But where you can, you should. Uh, I think from a presentation and a customer engagement perspective. Because one, it maximizes the real estate you can use, and I, you know, to me it just looks better from a, from a marketing perspective. But it's your personal choice of how you would like it to look. So there's a portion of the, the landscape that you can control, and it's basically you know, this, this kind of red area here is what you need to focus on when you're building your content. And I'll call this the box, so to speak. Or, or a block, and this is this is what you think about is what, this is where my content will go, and then when I put it in a frame, I want it to fill up a, 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 you know an ice spring uh, frame. I want it to fill up that frame, and you do need to pay attention to that that full screen button because you know you've got to plan for that when you actually go to full screen mode. And if you notice. Uh, in the little walkthrough I did, you know, the, when I went out of full screen mode, there was some space on the left and right, and so on. So you need to think about that as as you go through that process. So there's typically, I'll say, three common aspect ratios if you, if you're familiar with these, and you know, there's there's what's the traditional kind of what they call the four three, and if you think about Historically, computer monitors, they were more of this format. And actually, the, the Apple iPad and the Galaxy Tabs use this, uh, this type of, of aspect ratio today. And then there's the Microsoft Surface Pro, which actually uses a 3 to 2 aspect ratio. And then most new monitors, computer monitors, and a lot of the new televisions that you will see today use what's known as a 16 to 9 aspect ratio. So when you're thinking about building this type of presentation, you need to think about what's my target de device if you really want to be able to control it completely. I used a Microsoft Surface Pro in our engagements, so I used the 3.2 aspect ratio. And what I did here was to give you some kind of ideas of when you set the size of your presentation in PowerPoint, you can, you know, landscape mode, and then if you use these widths, and these are approximate, you'll have to play with it to get it exactly right for your device, but then when you actually publish it in iSpring with the, you know, the, 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 the 
frame you choose, the, the frame model you choose in iSpring, it'll come out the way you want it to look. So feel you know feel free to uh, use these or adjust them. So here's the recommendation that I have for you in, in, in doing this is uh, you know, choose that aspect ratio. Choose the device you, you're most likely to present it on, whether it's an iPad or a uh, Surface Pro or a Galaxy Tab or whatever, and then create that box presentation. So I go back to this slide and, and think about this area being the box. And that's where you want to create your content and then create that box presentation and, and just make it a box. Don't put any content in it yet because what you will find out is, is if you create all your, all your content and then you want to go back later and change the PowerPoint screen size or, or, or slide size, it's going to be miserable because everything's going to get adjusted <laughs> and you're going to have to go in and realign things. So. Create this just generic blank box, make it red, whatever color you want, and then choose your iSpring publishing format. Publish it. Does it look right? Yes? Very good. You've, you're, you've got your target uh, layout size, and now you can go on and create your, your great content. But no, if it's not quite right, well, okay, let's tweak the slide size and go back up and publish it again. This is a fairly simple process and it doesn't take you that long to do it, but it's well worth doing it up front. This is what I learned very quickly. Uh, I started with one aspect ratio and decided to go to the, uh, the Microsoft Pro and it took me quite a while to get everything redone. So this is a very important point. The second thing I'll, I'll say is uh, you know, use the selection pane and I, if, if, you're, if you've used uh, PowerPoint a lot, um, then you've probably already discovered it. But if you haven't, then you'll quickly find out that it becomes your best friend forever. And so what I'm talking about is this thing right over here. And it's the selection pane. And the way you get to it is you go through a range and select, do the selection pane. And if you have a fairly complex layout, then this thing becomes very important because one, it allows you to see everything that's on your slide and it allows you to be able to rename it. So I can rename that to that big old arrow, arrow and I can now you know, have something besides shape 22 or text box 99 or something. And it also allows you to rearrange the order of things and it allows you to hide things and turn them back on. And this is very important because if you go back and you look at the number of objects that I had on the screen in our interactive demo, then you know it was it, it was miserable trying to do you know, manage those, all those shapes without using the selection pane. So my recommendation to you is definitely, if you haven't learned about the selection pane, uh, play with it some and use it because it'll become your friend very quickly. So the, the whole key to developing this, this type of content was the use of triggers. And uh, if, again, if you've already used triggers, then you'll know how these work and they make your life pretty easy in building this type of, of interactive engagement presentation. And, and simply what a trigger is, is it allows one shape to control the actions of another shape. And it's a pretty simple process. It's you create the shape that you want to be triggered. So in our case, you know, I've got, uh, for those of you who are uh, old West uh, fans, uh, television and movie fans, you may recognize Roy Rogers and his world famous horse, Trigger. So uh, this will be the object in our example that we want to trigger. And then you assign animations to that object of what you want it to do when it is triggered. And then you create another shape that you will use 
use to uh, trigger that particular action and then you assign this trigger to that trigger shape and then uh, one last point is you can actually assign a trigger to a shape itself so it allows you to do things like dispatching it once you've you've created it so let's let's take a look at this and in this example I've created you know our shape over here called uh, Roy and trigger again use the selection pane rename your shape to something meaningful to you and then I created two other shapes and one was to send Roy and trigger away and the other is to bring Roy and trigger back so it's a very simple animation but this was really the core of what I did in the interactive demo is I wanted the pop-ups to display based on the selection of another shape in the landscape and then I wanted to be able to dispatch it away so this gave me complete flexibility in again controlling the dialogue that I was having with the, with the potential customers so send, tro send uh, Roy and Trigger away and send uh, bring Roy and Trigger back so let's let's again go over to the animation pane and 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 look at that so the first thing you'll notice is you know there's a couple of things called triggers here and let me warn you one, one thing PowerPoint Microsoft didn't do a very good job of was figuring out how to name these things in a meaningful way but uh, once you do it a couple of times you can kind of figure it out but it's a really a simple process and and what I'll actually do is let's just delete these two right quick and now I'll show you how to redo that so, so the first thing you know we'll sell is we want want Roy and uh, trigger to disappear and then we'll add an animation that says I want them to reappear and so you select the object you want to use and you say go sign a trigger and this is we want to send Roy and trigger away so it now created that trigger and we want to also bring them back so now I have these two triggers that I have assigned and if I go back to my demo I should again be able to send them away and bring them back so it's a pretty simple process so some things you need to think about in this process though one is okay I've got this nice little demo here that I say okay I have a trigger to bring this to this front object and I have a trigger to bring this back object and I can dismiss them and oops what just happened I didn't really want to go there right I clicked and somehow everything disappeared and you need to take into consideration that when you're doing triggers and you don't want to have this slide advance that you you need to uncheck this on you know your advanced slide on the mouse click because otherwise when you click anywhere on the screen it will advance the slide so the so very important that you go to the transition tab and you disable that so now when I another thing that you need to think about is that if you have objects that overlap then what happens oops wait a minute how did that back get there well I actually triggered the back right so if I trigger the back now and I go and I trigger the front so is the back there or did it disappear so one of the things that or a way you can get around that type of problem of having multiple objects you know or multiple shapes being triggered on your screen at the same time is to actually uh, create a group and I'll show you what this what this does so now if you notice I can click and I can click the back shape and I can click on anywhere on the screen and if I click click the the object to trigger the front one and I actually say okay trigger the back one it dismisses it and then it brings up the, the new one and this was again very important in that I had to make it where when the user dismissed an object you know it went away as they would expect it and there were no other objects on the screen and a very simple trick to do that is if you'll notice that in this front object right here that I want to be able to pop up and then display I actually created 
a group. And there's two pieces to it. There's the object itself, and then there's a background that fills up the entire screen. But you say, well, wait a minute, I don't see a background. Well, that's because I give it a color of white, and I set the transparency to 100%. So the object is there, you just don't see it. So now, when I set the trigger for this blue group, and I say, when I click on the pop-up blue group, and I want it to dismiss, then I can click anywhere on the screen and it'll dismiss that object. So it gives you very granular control over the whole process. One thing to think about about triggers is, you know, they get really messy if you start doing multiple assignments on an object with multiple trigger, and it's better to make them binary uh, because there's really no rhyme or reason to why they, they trigger in some instances. So as you're doing this type of presentation, make them binary, have an object, assign a, uh, another object that will trigger it, and, and use it in that context. If you try to assign multiple objects to trigger a single object or sing, another single shape, you'll find very quickly that it gets pretty complicated. So why not use macros? Macros would be very acceptable. You could do all of this with macros of hiding, you know, making it visible and, and making it objects invisible and, you know, based on the click of another shape, et cetera. But one, it's pretty technically complicated to do that. And two, uh, products, you know, even as good as iSpring Converter Pro is, you know, it would be almost impossible to figure out how to translate macros into JavaScript. So, if you're just going to use PowerPoint as your, you know, your presentation tool and not convert it, you could do this with macros, but it would be very complicated. Another aspect, and if you remember the presentation, or you know, it had on the left had um, the navigation bars, and this is what I call a tip for making poor man navigation bars. It's just simply, if you look is that I have three screens that are essentially the same. And I've just changed the, the object color in each of those screens. So it makes it very easy then to be able to just, as you page through, uh, you'll notice that the icon color changes. So as you assign a, a you know, a trigger or a hyperlink to that object to go to another page, then when you go to that page, that object will be color, uh, can show a different color or a different shape or so on. Uh, it's a very simple but effective uh, technique and, you know, without having to uh, you know, jump back and forth between a whole lot of screens and so on. I found it was easy given the fact that I really only had you know, five, a total of five panels to use this type of technique. Um, and I used hyperlinks to navigate between the various pages. And this presentation um, will actually be available, I, I believe, this presentation I'm showing you now. So you can actually take a look at this yourself. But I also used uh, I, uh, iSpring uh, ex, uh, Explorer for, for doing the branching control. And <clears throat> this is pretty important. If you remember in the demonstration, the first three slides were I could click on any place on the slide uh, and it would stay on that slide. And then when I got to the fourth slide, which was the use case, then I wanted to be able to use the previous and back buttons, but you know, I, I also wanted it to stay on that slide and not go to the next slide, as you will always do in, in PowerPoint. And so what you need to do is the combination of you know, on-mouse click that I showed you in the transition tab and setting this branching to none will then allow you to do that. So for the first three slides, I set your know, own mouse, uh, advance on mouse click, I turned it off. And then on the fourth one, I, I left it on, but I used iSpring to ensure that I didn't advance 
us to the next slide. So it gave me the previous and the back buttons, but it wouldn't advance to the next slide. So the only way I could navigate back and forth through the slide was to use those buttons. And the last to uh, topic before we get into you know the, the kind of the extra little tweak is is to talk about alignment of objects. And this is as you're going through this process, it's pretty pretty important at least from an aesthetics perspective. And let me give you a little example. I've got two slides here, and thinking of your navigation menu, for example, is if I transition between these two slides, you'll notice that the the, two bl the blue rectangle and the red rectangle and the orange circle are on the same, uh, same place on the, the slide, but you'll notice that I added some more objects on the second slide. So I put a, a purple star behind the red object and the starburst in front of it and a green triangle behind the red object. So now if I, if I go in and I want to change you know, the position of this guy over here, and I want to move this one over here, and I move this one down here, and in fact, let's make this one a little smaller. Now you'll notice that when I go through and I change between the two slides, things don't line up anymore. <clears throat> and this is the problem if you're trying to use that navigation structure. So what I did was, this is not actually part of the iSpring products, but I actually wrote a little macro that I can take these objects and I can actually say I want to examine their current position and then I can go over to the other slide and select those objects and I can say and I want to place them on this second slide in the same place and shape and size as in the first slide. So now when you go back to that, you'll see that again, they're in line. So if you have four, five, six slides, this becomes very important. And obviously this is not part of the iSpring Converter Pro product, but if you're interested in using this tool, contact me and I can show the add-in. I know we're getting close on time, so I'll hurry up so we can get to some questions. The last piece is, you know, if you want, there's a couple of things that I've suggested to iSpring, the iSpring team, in allowing you more control over the, 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 the uh, publishing format, things like uh, the position of the uh, uh, next and previous buttons. So you can actually, and this, this is where Luba will probably uh, you know, not want me to do this, but you can actually go into the JavaScript and change that and save it. And then when I go back to, uh, I lost my window here. Now I go back over here, oops, sorry, and I refresh. You'll notice that I moved the previous and next buttons over. <laughs> it's just a personal preference of how you want things arranged. <coughs> So uh, you can do that. I know they don't recommend it, but if you uh, want to. So lessons learned, and then we'll take questions. Choose your platform and aspect ratio early. Very important. Again, get control of your objects. This is a, a learn or shapes. Use you know use that selection pane. Understanding the order of things on the the the, the canvas is very important. Once you start grouping and ungrouping and regrouping, once you've assigned actions and animations, becomes a nightmare. So plan ahead for that. Uh, copying stuff from one screen or uh, slide to the next with triggers gets pretty messy. Uh, browser differences are a pain, and the ice spring turn is awesome. That's all I can say. They answered every question, and some of my questions were so dumb they were embarrassing but they never embarrassed me. <laughs> I covered a huge amount of, of information in there. Um, probably didn't leave time for questions like I should have, but uh, open to them right now. Thank you very much, Robert. I hope that you guys enjoyed the session and you found some useful advice for yourself that you could use in your daily content creation. And one of the questions that we had is about your presentation.
Uh, will you be able to share it with our uh, webinar attendees after? Uh, yes. Uh, you're talking about the presentation I just showed? Absolutely. Yes. And also, if uh, you could um, share just a um, an example slide for your seaplane presentation uh, that we could insert in our blog post for people to look at it and see how you um, inserted the how you use the triggers and set sure. the buttons. Is that going to be Absolutely. possible? Absolutely, I'll be glad to. Yes, oh, that's uh, in, amazing. In, in in fact, if anybody you know wants that particular presentation. I'll be glad to send them to it. There's nothing in there proprietary or anything. Uh, I, I'll, up front, I'll be honest, it's kind of messy because this was my first experiment through this process. Uh, and, and all those lessons I learned will always be applied going forward, but uh, I'd be glad to share that as well as, you know, I showed a couple of macros that I wrote. Uh, you know, if people want to contact me, mm -hmm. <clears throat> they can do that. So. Oh, great. Thanks for putting that slide up. Okay, um, guys, if you have any questions, this is the time to ask Robert. And also, I think that your, Robert, your presentation for Seaplane uh, will be very useful along with your webinar. Mm -hmm. for, for people to, like, take notes or anything like that. Yeah, well, I, you know, I said this is not, I think, the typical iSpring use case because I think, Mm -hmm. you know, based on your other webinars, uh, a lot of people use a lot of the education, e-learning tools you have, which are which are great, awesome tools. This is a kind of a unique approach to using iSpring mm -hmm. that hopefully people will be able to look at and say, oh, maybe I could incorporate this, some of this into my e-learning process also. Yeah, absolutely. And um, iSpring Converter Pro is perfect for that the types of tasks that converts your content and makes it web web ready. It makes it ready to share with other people. And uh, we have a question from uh, Richard. How long does it take you usually to create a presentation like this one? Uh, Richard, you know this this first one was was an experiment. So I I as I mentioned, I picked an aspect ratio for an iPad and started there and then decided I wanted to go to the Surface Pro and that was kind of a disaster for me because I had to change the aspect ratio, I had to rearrange everything um, and, and that took a lot of, of learning process you know, uh, to, to do that and, a, and some restarts. You know, that presentation that I showed you that's on the web also, <clears throat> if I if I did it over now, uh, knowing what I know, I think I could very easily do that whole process, given that I had the content in a week. <clears throat> so it's a pretty, price, pretty quick process from a CDCI perspective once you get started. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks, Richard. Oh, sorry, mm -hmm. Robert. <laughs> I apologize. Sorry. And uh, we also got a comment from Alan. Um, I can easily apply all those tips to my learning project. Greatest tips. Thank you. Oh, great. Uh, you know, there's, I, I am by no means a PowerPoint expert. Uh, <laughs> I've used it since, day, you know, since, as, as we say, uh, sometimes uh, when looking at me, uh, since Lassie was a pup, and some <laughs> of you know Lassie will understand that. So I've used it a long time, but I don't claim to be an expert, but I do know some things. And I continually learn these tips and tricks, and I think they're very helpful. And, I, and again, I do believe this will be good in the learning process to be able to engage your customers or your students in a, in a slightly different way. Mm -hmm. Right. And we also have a very interesting question from uh, Cindy. She says that mm -hmm. she joined late and got interrupted, but then she would like to know why would she choose iSpring Converter? Okay, so you know the the objective I had was to be able to use a tool that I understand fairly well, which is PowerPoint, and then have the flexibility to target it to different platforms. So whether it be a uh, 
just a computer screen that you'd use on your desktop, uh, maybe a laptop, uh, a, a handheld device such as a tablet or a mobile phone. Mobile phone would be a little too small for this, or the web. So like I said, if you go to the website in the URL I gave, you can actually use this presentation uh, interactively. So I looked at two, uh, two approaches. One was to have a development platform such as the iPad and use tools to develop it interactively or use this tool set. And to use this tool set, I needed something that would help me publish to all those different target platforms. And that's where iSpring Converter Pro came in. And it, it works flawlessly. And it's very simple. So. Thank you very much, Robert. Mm -hmm. And I think the next question would be more for uh, Luba. Does iSpring have any plans to make any interactions for iSpring Suite 8 that contain triggers? Uh, it's a little bit difficult question because uh, I'm not sure what kind of interactions with triggers uh, uh, Cynthia uh, was referring to. Uh, but in any case, I can tell that uh, iSpring Suite, uh, the same way as iSpring Converter Pro, can convert all triggers and animations uh, that you created in PowerPoint on its slides. So the main box of the presentation, the main content part of it, will already already support, support triggers and interactions that you create there with PowerPoint options. Uh, and if Cynthia needs some specific uh, kind of interactions, uh, please, Cynthia, feel free to send us a feature request to support at iSpringSolutions.com. Uh, we will be really glad to pass it on to, now, to our product development team uh, for their further consideration. Thank you, Luba. And we got a comment from Ellen. Maybe Cynthia meant creating pop-up windows with iSpring. Cynthia, anyway, please send us more details on your request. We will be glad to consider them. And also, um, we have a question from Sarah. Will there be other sessions about iSpring uh, tips and tricks? And I would say that yes, of course. Uh, we will be having more sessions on that topic. Um, if you want to be um, uh, keep keep up with our webinars, you are more than welcome to submit your email address in our blog, and this way you will be notified uh, about all our future webinars. And the next question is from uh, Richard again. It's for you, Robert. Uh, do you combine iSpring with other software other than PowerPoint to build even more complex project? Uh, do you have any recommendations? Uh, at this point, all I've done is, is use PowerPoint and iSpring Converter Pro. Um, and I, I might have to defer to Elena or Luba on what other products could possibly be integrated in with it. Um, you know, the one thing I did do, that very simple little tweak that I showed you with the, the CSS, I mean, you can, there's things you can do, and obviously, you know, iSpring says, please don't go touch the, <laughs> the stuff, because <laughs> as you start getting into the learning space where you're actually publishing this out into a life cycle, that would probably not be a good idea. But for just my one-off thing where I wanted to, you know, I wanted the uh, buttons in the middle, the previous and next buttons in the middle of the screen, that worked very fine. Mm -hmm. But I'm not familiar enough with it yet to say, you know, there's another tool I would go integrate with this at this point. But I definitely will investigate, and that's a good good question and point, Richard. Yeah, sure. Uh, Richard was saying, uh, had another comment for videos or media, and I would say that uh, iSpring Converter Pro is like the beginning tool, like a very basic fundamental tool and then we have more advanced tools such as iSpring Presenter or iSpring Suite which have more features in them and more um, possibilities, more options, so you're more than welcome to go check them out. Yeah, I, and I, I had looked at the entire suite to start with as, as an option and at the time I just, there were the, all the other features that were more e-learning oriented that I didn't need. Now, as we grow as a company and start doing more training and e-learning, obviously I'll be investigating those. But 
the Converter Pro product really does a great job of, of being able to take all of the features of, of PowerPoint. I mean, I couldn't find any animations that it wouldn't handle. It handled the triggers flawlessly. Uh, so, you know, the only thing I said is macros. You couldn't really do anything with those. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, all the base uh, PowerPoint features, it handled flawlessly. Awesome. So just to summarize, you found the perfect tool for your particular need, <laughs> right? For your particular... So, Absolutely. so in, order to, in order to be able, which I think <laughs> is um, in order to be able to find a solution, you have to think about what do you want to do? What, do you, what goal do you want to achieve? What project do you want to work on? And thinking about projects in more details, um, you will be able to to find for the solution, just knowing knowing your yeah. requirements, maybe. Oh, absolutely. And, and back to you know, I think Richard's earlier question of how long it takes. Again, I I started this you know with a very short time frame with an idea. Uh, proper planning up front, both from a target platform, a content perspective, what you want to accomplish in the engagement process will dramatically shorten the development cycle. And, mm -hmm. and iSpring Converter Pro makes that very easy after that. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much. And I think that um, I will share one one more comment from uh, Philippe. Great presentation. Thank you 1,000 <laughs> times for sharing. If you can share your <laughs> sample presentation, it will be perfect. Oh, why? Sorry, I will apply your tips as quickly as now. Oh, great. Well, Which I, I think is I, very I, sweet. <laughs> uh, very nice. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed participating today. Uh, there's a lot more I would have loved to have talked about, but I really wanted to hit on the things that I thought were kind of critical in this process. And hopefully if the uh, attendees learned a couple of uh, tricks and tips along the way, then, uh, you know, Hopefully they can come back and you know, be a presenter and share those uh, at a later date. Yeah, um, just wanted to thank you one more time, Robert, for, for, for mm -hmm. taking the time to participate. It's a great pleasure. And like you said before, uh, I hope that all the attendees or some of them found this webinar useful and could implement uh, the tips you've been sharing. And um, mm -hmm. Just wanted to mention one more time that all the attendees of this webinar are eligible for the discount and we will be uh, following up um, all of you guys after the webinar. So don't worry if you miss uh, some information, uh, we will get back to you as soon as possible. And in case you have any questions, you are more than welcome to reach out to us as well. So thanks everyone. Thank you, Elena. Thanks, Luba. And of course, thank you, Robert, for participating with me today. You're and I hope to see all of you, uh, our wonderful attendees, at our next webinars. And have a great day, everyone. All right. Thank Thanks you very everyone. much. Bye bye. Thanks, bye, bye, everyone. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Good night. Everyone, goodbye.